All right, this one's gonna be on a um, P2P client called Fopnew. It is uh, closed source, proprietary. However, uh, it says it says it contains no spyware or ads. Hopefully that should be the standard for every application, right? Um, anyways, they do have a Windows and Linux native build. And so I wasn't planning on using this uh, or doing a review on this, but uh, I did got some files of this and I do like the program. And I, I do have some issues with it, but um, We'll, we'll mention that later on here. Anyways, as far as the program itself, uh, real simple, you just open it and it'll automatically connect, right? And uh, if you wanna search for some stuff, uh, let's go to the search tab here. Let's say we search for, uh, what was it? Uh, Ubuntu, I spell it right. So there we go. So this one is, it says it uses um, UDP in a mesh and it's decentralized. So you do like, it's kind of like a node kind of thing because it's decentralized. So you connect to other peers that way with nodes. And you know, if you want to download stuff, it's kind of like Napster. So just double click on, you know, the ones that you want. So let's say if I want to download, um, you know, Ubuntu ISO here, I can do that. Let's say I want to download, what is this one here? Some Ubuntu stuff, right? Double click on that and it should be in your tab here. And it'll start downloading uh, from that user, right? And you can check out, you know, which user you're downloading from, you know, from there. And if you actually want to browse it, uh, you can go browse and you can see what they got. And you can actually download from here too, if you want to download, um, you know, more stuff from them, right? Uh, or if you want to, you know, maybe chat with them or add them to contacts, you can do that because they do have a chat system in here. Um, but that's how that works for downloading, you know, not that hard. Now the, the, the speed depends on, you know, I guess the, um, the user you're downloading from, right? Uh, other than that, what can we do? We'll stop here. Um, as far as the search, real simple, you just select, you know, the ones that you don't want to uh, search for. If I want to search for videos only, I can do videos. Let's say for example, we'll do Ubuntu again here. And this time I'll only search for videos only, right? Because they have different categories here. The one thing I don't like about this search option here is that it doesn't have like tabs for all your other search queries. Like in other programs like uh, AMU, you can actually have like tabs for each of your search, uh, you know, uh, history, right? This one, it just does, you know, replaces the existing one, which is kind of annoying. Um, but that's how that works. If you want to have all the categories and you just click on it, real simple. Anything else I'm saying here? Um, pretty much it for, you know, the search and download. Not that hard. They do have a chat system here. So they have like these uh, forums, not forums. Uh, yeah, chat, uh, you know, uh, rooms that you can go into. If you want to refresh, you, you can do like click on add here and then just gather and it'll actually, uh, you know, refresh it to see more rooms available. And if you want to go in there just double click on the ones you want, like I'm in this anime one here and you can chat, you know, down here if you like. All right. And down was that over in the corner here? This is your uh, users that's in here. And if I want to browse any of them, let's say I want to browse um you know, this person's uh, shares, I can do that from here, which uh, they don't have anything. Okay, let's do someone else here. There we go. Takes a second to download their list here. Um, I just think it's so long to connect to this person. But it's similar to the other ones where you have, you know, um, a list of what they got and you can download from them if you want. Most of these people, they have like terabytes of data they're sharing. So even though it's like a, you know, low amount of users, there's like a, a high amount of uh, shares in here. So that's why I'm doing a, a video on this because I did get some files in here that I couldn't get in on other places. Uh, so it still might be useful even though it's closed source uh, application. Um, you know, if you're looking for files, this can be another source of uh, way to get it, right? Now, as far as, um, you know, this, uh, I believe down here, this is your total peers at the way at the bottom here in the left corner. 
So right now we have uh, 262 peers in the cache and it's decentralized. So basically these are all your nodes that you're connecting to, I guess. All right. Anyways, uh, pretty much it for the program in a nutshell. I mean, I mean, you know, right here, this is where you have your, um, your shares. If you want to add another, um, directory to have, you know, whatever you want to share that you can do in here. Uh, what else can you do in here? So this is your option up here. If you hit in this cog icon, um, you want to go to your network. Make sure you have this port enable. Uh, you do it in um, either manually in your uh, router where you, you know, port forward. And if you have firewall, I guess you have to enable that too. Otherwise, if you want to use a UPnP uh, in your router, make sure that's enabled in your router settings. But uh, just check this box and it'll, you know, automatically open the ports that's required for this program to work. Um, as far as, you know, username and stuff like that, it doesn't really matter. It will automatically assign you as guest something, something. If you want to uh, change it, you can change it, but guess is fine. Anyways, that's how you download stuff from here. Um, not that hard, you know, you just double click on the ones you want. And when you're searching issues I have with this program, um, well, it is, um, well, you know, you know, in Linux, you say you have a freedom of choice. What the Linux folks really means is your freedom of choice is narrowed down to just uh, the open source license that's available, right? They don't they don't really care about you know um, proprietary stuff because you can't really touch you know trust it a hundred percent. As much as you have a good track record, uh, if it's not open source, I I generally cannot trust it a hundred percent. It's just the nature of what it is nowadays. Everyone's after your information, you know. So if it's not open source. You can't trust, you know, you can't blame people for you know, not trusting 100%. Just how it is, right? Uh, other things in here. So, as far as I did a little history on uh, this developer. He, uh, he's created WinMX, which is a uh, Napster clone kind of thing, which uses OpenNap, right? And he's also created uh, Texati, which is a BitTorrent client. Now, those two, I don't care if it's closed source client or not um doesn't bother me because the protocol is what uh, concerns me you know um when mx uses open app and there's a bunch of other uh open app uh, clients out there so you know if that one dies it doesn't really bother me right uh Tixati is a bit torn client so you know the bit torn client there's a bunch of other uh bit torn clients out there so that's not an issue too because if that one dies you know who cares there's a bunch of other uh, clients you can use. This FOP new thing here, this one is like the only one of its kind. All right. Uh, it has its own like uh, proprietary protocol. Even though it says it uses UDP um, to do all this, you know, encryption and communication, there must be a layer on top of that to connect to peers and stuff like that. Right. And unless you're going to reverse engineer or something like that to create your own client, uh, this will be the only client that can support it. And yeah, that will be it. You know, this is the only interface. So it would be only GUI. Um, that's the, the concerning part I have with this one is that since it's closed source, uh, there will be no other programmers to write like uh, a daemon for it, a command line interface for it, a web interface for it, or like a text user interface, which I would love it if they had like a text user interface for uh, all the P2P clients out there. Um, which is what I want, but this thing, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this will be the only client that can connect to this protocol and it will live and die with this one programmer. All right. Uh, you know, let's say if this program gets bored or maybe they die tomorrow, that'll be, that'll be the end of it. All right. It's not open source. No one's going to continue it. Uh, the protocol, you can't even connect to it with any other client, right? So um, that's the issue I have with this one. As far as the other ones that he has, like I said, I don't really care if your client is closed source or not. The protocol, uh, right, as of right now, uh, it's not going to survive long term if if it's going to be closed source because you see a bunch of programs dies over the years. And I'm talking about like decades, you know, um, long term wise, it's not going to last very long. And why would you know people want to use this over like uh, AMU? Would they have like the e, e Donkey Network or uh, what was it the the CAD Network, right? 
stuff like that you have to um, be concerned with that if you want to use this so in a nutshell use it if you want but don't be surprised if it dies tomorrow you know and uh, don't get too attached to it right however it is their freedom of choice to do uh, closed source so don't blame the person for it because you know they said that on their page uh, they never uh, advertise this as open source um, anyways that's it for the program I did get some good files from it it is a pretty fast client so uh, you know it's not Java or any of that junk right uh, anyways use it if you want um, that'll be the one